Good morning. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Hey, all right. Okay, first, if you are tuning in, our radio station, if you if you don't have your radio on, is 96.1. So if you want to listen on your radio, tune in 96.1. Okay, and now Tim wanted me to check and make sure those of you in the back, can you hear okay or is it too loud? Apparently it was it was pretty loud to begin with. Did we get the levels right? Beep beep if it's good. Okay, we got a thumbs up from Sharon. Okay, good. We got that out of the way. Now we'll get announcements out of the way, and then we can get to the good part of church. So today, our radio sponsor for our broadcast is Sharon Staples. Again this week, thank you, Sharon. And she is sponsoring in, in memory of her dad. And How appropriate on Father's Day. That's very, very special. Uh, for next week, we are in need, though, of a radio sponsor. So on the West Narthex and the entryway, there's a clipboard. You can sign up in there and sponsor for next week. Um, so our general offering, um, our offering will be taken as you exit today. And just as a matter of housekeeping, when we say go in peace, serve the Lord, we'll have the back row exit first. Lori, are you the first one in the corner there? Okay, Lori, you lead us off. When the back row's gone, middle row, then the front row. And as you're leaving, we'll have boxes for offering that you can drop in there. Our offerings are going for our general fund. Um, and, of course, we not only offer our our gifts, but our talents and our time as well. Uh, Pastor Dale and Gwen have been away for some much-deserved R&R. They will be back with us next week with worship, so be sure to welcome them back with open arms and uh, check how their vacation was. And just, we always miss them when they're not here. So be sure to welcome them back. And happy Father's Day to all of our dads out there. Happy Father's Day to my Husband, Scott, absolute best dad in the world. And then my dad, Russ, all of you dads, happy Father's Day. So with that, announcements out of the way, sound out of the way. Now I'm not nervous anymore. So let's get on with church. God does not promise that the path of discipleship is easy. Jeremiah feels the pain of rejection from those who do not want to hear what he has to say. Jesus declares that his words may bring stark division. Even so, we need not be afraid, for God accounts for each hair on our head. Though we may experience rejection, frustration, division, and sometimes even death, God's grace and love make, makes us a new creation each day. We're marked with the cross and filled with the holy food that we are sent from worship to witness to Christ in the world. And our confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And as always, the good news. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, he forgives us all of our sins. Not because of who I am or who you are, but because of God's grace. All of our sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our first hymn today in memory of John Dirk's Borning Cry.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not heed the wounds, to toil and not seek for rest, to labor and not ask for reward, except that of knowing that we will do your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. For our reading today, we chose Romans 6, verse 1b through 11. And it talks about in baptism, we were incorporated into the reality of Christ's death and resurrection. And we've been made new in Christ through his death and resurrection to live free from sin. And this is a reading from Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin for we will also live with him. We will know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die for all, but he lives his life. He lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew chapter 10 verses 24 through 39 glory to you O Lord and Jesus said to the 12 a disciple is not above the teacher nor a slave above the master it is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master for if they have called the master of the house Beelbazul how much more will they malign those of his household so have no fear for them for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing is secret that will not become known. What I say to you in dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both body and soul. For are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet one of them will not fall to the ground apart from your father. Even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid, for you are of more value than the sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have come to bring not peace, but a sword. For I have come to set man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. For those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and for this place. And we ask that you would open our minds and unburden our hearts so that we can hear those words you have from us to apply to our lives. Above all, we'll be careful to give you the glory. In your name we pray. Amen. There's a saying out there about worry. Worry is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it doesn't get you anywhere. Now, 
There's two kinds of people. You've got the worriers and the not worriers. And more often than not, whether it's a friendship or a marriage or a working relationship, those two people tend to find each other. And the one who worries, 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 and the other one is always saying, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Well, I think it's safe to say we all worry from time to time. Whether it's about health or money or things going on in the world or our kids or our parents. And I think it's safe to say we all, as much as we like to avoid it, have conflict in our lives. Again, family, work, our community. And unfortunately, sometimes we have conflict in our church. Well, last week in our gospel text, remember, Jesus called his disciples. Today in our gospel text, Jesus has given them their marching orders. He's telling them what they need to do to go out, proclaim the good news that the kingdom of God has come. Now, Jesus, when he came to earth, he knew what people's reaction eventually was going to be to him, and that was rejection. And as he called and sent his disciples, he knew that for them, too, eventually it was going to be a life of rejection because of him and his message. But he told them, preach with boldness, preach with confidence, and take me with you. Maybe not physically, but I will be there to give you the words that you need. Now remember, as they're going into this basically conflicting job, they lived in a time where conflict was part of everyday life. They lived under Roman rule. I mean, they were used to seeing conflict, used to kind of living in fear. They knew that conflict was going to be a normal part of their life. And for us, conflict can be too. It can make us feel overwhelmed because there are problems we just can't solve. And those problems we can't solve lead to worry. And worry leads to fear. Now, fear is a funny thing. And every time I preach on this text, I quick do a Google search on the greatest fears that we have today. And, and they change from time to time. So, so as of today, our top ten fears are needles, spiders, Snakes, bingo, <laughs> failure, death, claustrophobia, the fear of tight spaces, fear of the dark, fear of heights and flying, but always number one are social fears, namely public speaking, which I just chuckle at because death always falls somewhere down six or seven, and, and Lauren, you can believe your friends when they say they'd rather die than give a book report to their class. But... Fear is real. Now, Jesus does not forbid that kind of fear that keeps us from doing dangerous and dumb things. I mean, that's a natural instinct that he gave us to keep us out of trouble. And I guarantee you, the Lord will forgive me and not look down on me if a snake slithered across the concrete here. Uh, I guarantee I would be out of here screaming, probably crying, most likely. I am deathly afraid of snakes. It's not that kind of fear that Jesus tells us not to have. It's the kind of fear that keeps us from doing what he wants us to do, from the mission he has on our life. Three times in our gospel text, as Jesus was sending his disciples out, he told them not to fear. Verse 26, verse 28, and verse 31. Knowing what they were going to face, he told them, don't fear, let me be enough. Take me with you. Take me with you into it. Now, sometimes we forget as Christians to take Jesus with us when we go. And sometimes we think of Jesus more as a cleaning service, to come in after us to clean up all the messes that we seem to make. Jesus says, have no fear, for I am with you. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet one does not fall to the ground apart from me. If he knows how many hairs are on her head, he knows how much we need him. And he knows what we need for him to be enough. Now, again, last week I said, if there's one thing I try to say every time that I get an opportunity and privilege to preach, it's that calling the disciples didn't stop back when Jesus called his 12 disciples. He continues to call us today. And there's still plenty of work for us to do. Now, again, many of us are not going to be called to full-time ministry. It's our lives where we are our witness. And we're blessed today to be able to be here, not fear for our lives, fear for the lives of our families, our loved ones, because we're Christians, because we're worshiping. 
Not everyone in the world can say that. So we don't have that kind of persecution for being a Christian. But sometimes when, because of our life, our call, being a Christian, you sometimes get excluded. And sometimes there are those sideways comments because someone knows that, that you're a Christian. So there is that kind of persecution. But again, we need to go with boldness, go with confidence that Jesus is with us. Today um, in our lectionary text, there was a passage from Jeremiah, uh, the prophet. And being a prophet definitely was a a dangerous occupation. And, And he was in prison at the time, and he was lamenting the fact that God put that desire to share his word within him so much that no matter what happened to him, he couldn't not share it. He said, if I can say I will not mention his name, it is like a fire shut up within me, like a fire burning in my bones. I am weary of holding it in. Having it, God's love, his word alive in your life so much that people can't not see it. Part of who we are in here. Last year, right before spring finals, my son Brandon put his laptop just right on the, right on the corner of his table in his apartment and and wasn't quite on there right he reached down grabbed something out of his backpack and as he came up he bumped it knocked it to the ground well when he got it up sure enough there's the horrible black screen couldn't get anything to come up had a chip on the side well he made it through his last day of class that was the last day of the week he came home and when he turned it on, you could hear it cooking. I mean, you could hear it coming alive, but nothing would come on the screen. So he had this idea to take a cord from the computer, and somehow he hooked it up to our television, and he could see what was on his computer, and he was able to get it transferred over to a different computer. He went on, finished finals, did fine. See, that screen was cracked, but that hard drive was okay. For us as Christians... Our screens are going to get cracked sometimes. We're going to be a little worse for the wear. We're going to get persecuted. But we need to have Jesus alive in our hearts so much that no matter what happens, it's always going to be there and they can't take it away. It takes faith to reach out and let God calm our fears, to be courageous. Courage is not not being afraid. It's not letting that fear stop us keep us from doing what we need to do. And I know that in our baptism, that's when Jesus chooses us. But at some point, we have to get to the point as Christians where it's real to us and we choose him. And we say, look, I know sin is a part of my life, Lord, and no matter what I do, it's going to be there. I need you to come into my life, into my heart. There's nothing I can do to buy my salvation. It's only through you. That is what we need to do. And doing that takes fear sometimes. It takes courage. And as disciples, it can get messy from time to time. I think it's natural to want to have just pretty church. And that's the church where we come in, we're dressed up, we sit in our allotted pew. Don't tell me you don't have your pew at church. Ours is piano side, third row back from the notched out pew. That's ours. We want to come, sing a few songs, hear an uplifting, wonderful sermon, have a little coffee afterwards and go home and watch the ball game. That's what we want is pretty church. Well, if someone says, well, we got to talk about sin. What, what about sin? And we say, oh, no, no, we don't talk about that here. We, we, we save our conflict resolution for the important things like, do we have contemporary worship or do we have traditional worship? See, I think sometimes... We concentrate on those things that they just don't necessarily matter in the grand scheme of things. If there's one phrase I try to say as often as I can when I have the privilege of preaching, another one is we've got to boil it down to two simple things. Love God and love each other. If we do that, all of those other things like whether we have contemporary worship or traditional worship or whether we have carpet or tile or coffee before or after, those things Somehow those conflicts we work out if we love God and we love each other. Today is Father's Day, and my dad's going to be preaching here in about 45 minutes at his church. But this afternoon I'm going to give him a call. I'm going to say, hey, Dad, happy Father's Day. I love you. We're going to grill with Russ and Elon tonight, and 
again, we're going to have the chance to say, hey, Russ, thanks for all you do. We love you. We all have a Heavenly Father. And we need a chance to say, Happy Father's Day, Lord, I love you. Because again, when that love is so much a part of who we are, when his word is so much a part of who we are and alive in us, it makes all of those fears, all of those conflicts, everything that we face, it just helps them work out because he's here. So we're going to close with a song, a real simple, simple praise chorus called I Love You, Lord. So make this your chance to tell the Lord, Happy Father's Day, I love you. Let it be a chance for all of that to just soak in so that this week when you go out, you can be the Christian that he needs you to be, the disciple he's called you to be. Amen. As disciples, let's say the words of our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, you have commanded the light to shine out of darkness, and you have again brought us to your house of prayer and praise, your goodness, and we ask for your gifts. Accept now in your endless mercy our worship and thanksgiving, and grant us those requests which will be wholesome and good for us. Make us to be children of the light and of the day and heirs of your everlasting inheritance. Remember, O oh Lord, according to the multitudes of your mercies, your whole church, all who join with us in prayer, all of our sisters and brothers, wherever they may be in your vast kingdom, who stand in need of your help, comfort, and healing. We especially pray for Margaret, Mary, Peggy, Marilyn, for Bernice, Roger, Carl, and John, for Elaine, Judy, Phyllis, Clarine, David, Gary, Chris, and Carol, for Linda, Sawyer, Lila, for Dave and Judy, for Craig and Irene, Mary Ellen and Harry and Les, and those who we name silently in our hearts. Pour out upon them the riches of your mercy so that we, redeemed in soul and body and steadfast in faith, may ever praise your wonderful and holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and who taught us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now for the blessing. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing as you walk with him and abound in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm-hmm. Our sending him is, it's a pretty fun one. It's one of my favorites. I love to tell the story, and this is going to be one that we'll be singing all week long. I love to tell the story. if you like that one. I love that one. <laughs> All right. So remember, back row first, middle row, and then the front row. Christ is with you. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.